Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a flip through of my 2023 reading journal. It is my completed reading journal for the full year of 2023, which is so exciting and I can't wait to get into it. First, we'll just discuss and talk about the reading journal itself. So this is an Archer and Olive 8x8 eight eight square journal. This was my first Archer and Olive journal and I don't think I could, I don't think I could ever really go back to any other journals, at least for a reading journal. This one, the paper is just so thick. It never bleeds with any pen I've ever tested for it or on it. And I love the size, I love the fabric, I love the paper, I love everything about it. I got this red one with this like lighthouse on it. It was a vibe last year. If you saw my reading journal set up for 2024, you'll see it's very different. <laughs> Let me grab it. This is my journal this year, so it's very neutral. I uh, switched up the theme, but if you want to watch me set up this journal, I have a whole separate video about that today we're talking about this one. Oh my god. Danger. Let's just get into it. So this is the first page when you open up the journal. I kept this really simple. I wanted to do a theme around it eventually but I just never knew what to do so I stuck this nice <laughs> sticker on it on this side. I wrote my name, my handle, and then I had this little cheat sheet of whenever I finished a book, the things that I like to keep track of and the trackers I like to use. Once I was doing this journal for like a month, I didn't really need to reference this anymore, but I kept it. Then we have my title page, I guess you could say, my reading journal 2023. Cute, simple theme. My journal this past year, was very very simple I have to say and it was perfect because I was setting it up so that I couldn't fail that I can just didn't have to stick to anything super crazy and I loved it and I stuck to it the whole year and I felt like I wanted to be more creative you know mid-year to the end of the year so that's why I switched it up for my new journal. But next we have my index, which you can see here. <laughs> I did not use a lot. I just, I didn't put each book down on the corresponding page, just different spreads and then the months. So didn't use it that much, but it was handy when I did need to use it. Then the next page we have my reading goals page. You can see what I did and what I achieved last year and what I didn't achieve last year. And then next you have my reading tracker. My goal was 120 books and I got that. Then we have my bookshelfie, which I made the book so small. So I changed that up for my next journal and I'm just realizing now I, I actually did not finish this shelfie. I finished The Shining, which I think was in November I read that. So I have quite a few left to add, but Anyways, then we have my book log. So this is a four page spread and you can see like how some things kind of change throughout the year. So I got a five star stamp in March and that really changed the look. I feel like with a lot of my spreads, it made it just look more cohesive and put together. And I love that look about it. And yeah, so this is just all the books that I read the title, author, dates I read them, if it was audio, ebook, or physical, and my rating. Then we have my best book of 2023 spread. So if you don't want to watch that whole video of me deciding what my best book was, the answer is The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. <laughs> Then we have my monthly ratings, which is so fun to look at at the end of the year. I had one one star <laughs> and 26 five stars. And then my genre tracker, which I had to extend. So I changed it up this next year or I changed it up for 2024 so that hopefully I don't have to extend it because this kind of got annoying to fill out. But yeah. It's cool to see what genres I really like and what genres I barely read anything from. 
Moving on, we have my 23 and 2023. So these are the 23 books I wanted to read. Didn't end up reading all of them, but we read most of them. I like colored the outline of the books that I did read. And I found uh, with a lot of spreads, I forgot which color I used. I never wrote it down. So you'll see a mix of different browns <laughs> in a lot of these spreads. Then this is a spread that I enjoyed until I didn't. The book spot in 2023. I think I kept this up. I think I have two spreads about this, possibly. And then I just stopped keeping track. Then we have my book bingo. So I did not accomplish two prompts and I did change this up a little for my new journal. And then my physical book spread, this one too, I think I stopped tracking, I believe. Then we get into some fun spreads. So this is the Tipsy Tolstoy War and Peace schedule. Now they're called the Slavic podcast, no, Slavic literature podcast. I was following along their war and peace schedule until I fell too behind and I just stopped updating this. I think I am farther into war and peace. I haven't finished it yet, but yeah, I stopped updating this tracker, obviously, because it's not 2023 anymore. And then next I have the A Game of Tomes book club, their schedule for this year. You'll see I did not read the last three books. I want to read them this year, but I'll get to them eventually. And then we enter my monthly spreads. So every month I have a spread where I have on one page the books that I'm reading and on the second page the pages that I read every day. And then you'll see like the color corresponds to the book. And then I usually choose around four. No, I choose seven colors usually. I think I try doing less this month and I realize how much I overlap but most months I think I chose seven colors and then so it will be easier to track so you'll see that change as well as we go along so this one is January very straightforward simple and then we go into my ratings so I won't talk about all of these books but love this book it was in my top 10 of the year and also forewarning there's probably a lot of spoilers in all of these so if you haven't read the books I just would not look too closely I don't even know how well my camera will um, focus on these because I'm moving my hands around so much they're probably focusing a lot on my hands so sorry about that but <laughs> let me get my hands out of the way but yeah if you haven't read some of these books I think some of them I did put um, sticky notes on but I didn't read through all of them so Another, The Boardwalk Bookshop, is such an underrated romance. I feel like I hear nobody talk about it, but I loved it. I did not like it if he had been with me. Uh, Honey and Spice was good. A Farewell to Arms was really good. And then you'll see every month I have a wrap-up spread where I talk about the number of books I read, pages I read, hours I listened, if I listened on audiobook, um, DNFs. The format breakdown of you know what books I read in what format and then the genre breakdown and then all of the books moving on to February we have a cute pink theme and yeah this is when I switched to seven colors just to you know be able to distinguish them easier and then I also I know I didn't start this in February but I went back I, anytime I finished a book, I did a little like star on that day so that it could like break up, um, you know, when I finished each book. Didn't like Icebreaker, loved better than the movies. That was a fantastic book. Oh, I guess I should also tell you for each review, I write down the, obviously the title the author my rating the number I have here is associated to like what number book I read that year so better than the movies was the 13th book I read last year then we have here 
a couple different things I like to keep track of. So the format I read it in, the length of the book, when it was published, just the year, the genre, and then the dates I read the book, and then obviously my review. Heartless was so- oh, all three of these books were so good. This is when I did my first or second love it or leave it challenge, so I need to get back to doing that challenge because it was actually pretty fun to get through my TBR or my physical TBR. That one was a good one. The Steel Flea still makes me laugh when I think about it. Island of Dr. Moreau and then Once There Was a War. That one was also a tearjerker. Moving on to March, this is when I was reading a lot of books at once. <laughs> so I had to add in this flip here. And then I also tried changing up like the pacing of the page numbers. But then I switched it back to the way I used to do it because it just felt like it was really condensing them. Then in March, Indigo Ridge was good. All of these were pretty good books. No super bad complaints. This is when I was trying to read all of the arcs I had, and I still have quite a few I need to get through. But this kind of, you know, I had like two meh arcs back to back, and then one, two for the road was good. But that kind of got me not really wanting to read my arcs because I was not getting really good ones, even though I thought they were good. This was another, I think, um, time when I did my Read My Fiscal TBR challenge. Book of Lymph, the picture of Dorian Gray. Ah, and now we get my first Q1 wrap-up. So I do a wrap-up also every quarter. And you'll see here, it's kind of the same information, just for the first three months of the year. And then I did a little section for my favorite books. Moving on to April. April was a really good month because I was on vacation for like almost a week. So I read quite a bit when I was away. But this was a really good reading month. Oh, The Book Thief. I cried a lot reading that book. The Mindfuck series was such a great series. I just did one whole spread for all of them because they're pretty short, if you can see. Us Against You and Powerless. Oh my god. Fantastic books. Like, I think both of these... No, I think just Us Against You was in my favorite books of 2023. Then we get our April wrap-up. Not that bad. 11 books because of all of these. Ah, so I did have a part two. Books bought in 2023. So I think this is when I stopped in June. So that's not that bad, halfway through the year. Hmm. I don't think though I added my May haul when I did the Penguin book sale because that was like a lot of books. Now we have May, which I loved this theme. What a cute theme. Oh, this was such a good reading month too. Happy Place, David Copperfield. I don't know why I stuck the sticker here. I feel like it does not match the theme, but whatever. Little Woman, The Kite Runner. Oh, all of these are really good books. Oh, and then here I started adding the cover of the book I DNF'd because I was not really keeping track otherwise. But I don't know if I continued this. <laughs> wow, the genre breakdown is very straightforward this month. Ah, then this is when I joined the Hardcore Literature Book Club, so I so I printed out all the books that were on the syllabus that year, and as you can see, I did not really read much. I read Orlando, I was reading War and Peace, I read um, The Brothers Karamazov, and then I did read A Tale of Two Cities, I just finished it this year. I've read Jane Eyre before, so I could have given my star reading, but yeah. Um, oh, and I read The Importance of Being Earnest. Okay, so that's not that bad. I've read one, two, three, four, five, and reading one. 
anyways and then i added this spread that says thoughts and things and i really actually love the look of the spread and i thought it was such a good idea and i never went back and jotted down my thoughts and things so i think i want to do this again in my current reading journal but like maybe tab it so i'm reminded of the spread now we move on to june this was also such a pretty month i also try to correspond if you haven't noticed the colors to the washi tape i select and i feel like this was a really good one oh when i started adding cat stickers Oh, the Cruel Prince. I want to continue that series soon. Reckless. Fantastic book. Fourth Wing. Practice Makes Perfect. Oh, yours truly. Yeah, this was a good reading month. The Stranger was also... I had a lot of thoughts <laughs> about The Stranger. And then my June wrap-up, and I started adding the little stars as well. Oh, I didn't add... I, I stamped them out, but I didn't fill them in. It's funny seeing all the little things that you miss after you actually taken a look at the um, spreads. And then my Q2 wrap up. Moving on to July, I also love this washi tape. I think July was not that great of a reading month. <laughs> Just looking at these spreads. Oh, I hated the troop. I think I would honestly give this one star looking back now this was a part of summerween love theoretically the people in the trees i still think like this book hanya yanagahara's books in general i feel like haunt me like i think about them a lot or they'll just pop into my mind randomly oh and then my beauty the brothers karamazov oh i love that book so much my july wrap up Moving on to August. Nice green theme. Some great books we've got here. Lots of quotes for a gathering of shadows. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Pride and Prejudice. Oh my god, The Bodyguard. Oh, such good books. And then my August wrap up. <laughs> a random blank piece of paper. I don't know what I was going to do here, but... Then my September spread, nice and fall themed. Ooh, cat sleeping. Oh my gosh, the seven year slip was such a good book. I'm noticing how like my writing is very messy. <laughs> I need to switch that up in my new journal because wow, some of this is hard to read. Divine Rivals, Done and Dusted. Oh, those were two bangers back to back. And then I got some not so good bangers, or not bangers afterwards. Oh, when I did my dark academia video, I love the spread. Ah, and then King Lear. I don't know what I was gonna do with this empty space. I should put my like ticket here when we went to go see King Lear after I read it. Maybe I'll do that if I remember after this video. And then we've got my September wrap-up and my Q3 wrap-up. I'm noticing I did not have many DNFs, so I need to switch that up because quite a few of these I would have DNFed, or I should have. Then we've got my October reads. Honestly, looking at the spread, it's more of a November spread than October, but whatever. Uh, I loved Before the Cock Gets Cold. That was a good one. Hopeless. Nora goes off script. That was a great one. And then I did my Once Upon a Broken Heart reread, as well as my The Ballad of Never After reread to get ready for A Curse for True Love. We have The Awakening. My October wrap up. Oh, and then I put my November wrap up here because, again, I left a blank page. So I just did it back to back. But this is my November spread. Then we got A Christopher True Love, Iron Flame, and then some not so great books afterwards. Oh, and then some amazing books, Never Let Me Go. Really, really good. And then The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. 
and then December. So obviously I had to do like a Christmas theme here. This I went down to one stars. Horrible book. <laughs> uh, I love the importance of being earnest. So you can tell I used a new ink pad because look at the difference. This one is so much darker than this. Northanger Abbey, A Christmas Carol. I can't believe I read Foster last year. Like, it was my last book of the year, I think. Was it my last book? Yeah, it was. So, it feels like I just read it. And this was my December wrap-up. I also never recorded a December wrap-up. I noticed that this past month. So, sorry for that. But here's my December wrap-up. Maybe we can do one quickly. <laughs> Wreck the Halls didn't like. It was probably my least favorite Tessa Bailey. It was just so cheesy and the story was not there and was not Christmassy at all. Then we have the Yellow Wallpaper, which I read in addition that had two other short stories in it. I think I loved the Yellow Wallpaper more than the other two, but they were all really great. And I'm really intrigued with um, Charlotte Perkins Gilman's writing. Because it was just so good. Then we've got The Importance of Being Earnest. This was hilarious. Probably the funniest play I've ever read. Then we have Northanger Abbey. Which was a satire Jane Austen novel about gothic novels. So it was kind of making fun of the gothics. It was very unserious. And I think you have to read it as an unserious book to really like it and appreciate it. Because it's just hilarious a christmas carol the perfect christmas book i want to read this every year it was just so good and it really puts you in the christmas spirit then i listened to the honeymoon crashers which is like an audiobook exclusive of after the unhoneymooners and this is like the wedding for the couple in the first book it was pretty good i i I liked it, but it was a little unnecessary, but I liked it overall. Then we've got Once Upon a December, which I really enjoyed this one. It was a great Christmas romance, and I would suggest it if you're looking for a romance at Christmas. And it was very, like, no smut. It's great if you're looking for a romance that doesn't have a lot of smut in it. And then lastly, I read Foster, which was like a short story. Yeah, this book reminded me a lot about Anne of Green Gables, but it was... A lot more depressing than Anne of Green Gables. It was really, really good, and I loved Claire Kagan's writing. I really want to read her other books um, because it was just beautifully written, and that ending was was something else. Then we have my Q4 wrap up. I didn't even put <laughs> stamps here. And then my last spread in this journal, I did a books of 2023 spread. So these are all the books that I read in 2023. And I tried. I double, triple, quadruple checked. And yet I still ended up messing up and not printing a couple of the books that I needed. But it is what it is. And then that's it. So I ended up having... I don't know, maybe this is like 15, 10 to 15 empty pages. So that helped me realize how many pages I would typically use if I'm just tracking my reading and not adding like super fun or anything crazy spreads. So I did change that for my new journal. Um, I did some more fun spreads and I think I'm going to do some more creative stuff because I know I have that space and capacity. And then the back of the journal has a little pocket. So I have just some extra book covers of books I read last year. I didn't want to get rid of them just in case I need them again for some odd reason. But yeah, that is my 2023 reading journals. Thank you all for watching. I hope that wasn't boring and that you enjoyed seeing what it looks like after I've completed my reading journal, after seeing me set it up over a year ago, it's been fun and I can't wait to see what my new journal looks like. Maybe I'll give you guys a sneak peek.
so you guys can go watch that video. Oh, this is actually a spread you guys did not see. But this is how my journal looks like this year. So very, very, very different. So much fun. But I love them equally. Okay, maybe not equally, but I love them both. Please let me know if you have your own reading journal and what your reading journal looked like by the end of the year. Let me know if you want to see more reading journal content. I will definitely film that more in the future. And I will see you all in my next video. Happy reading. Bye!